Uh, good morning, everyone. So today my topic of presentation is toric IOL, the different marking methods. I'm Dr. Swati Agarwal from Kolkata. So for any toric IOL to give results with accuracy and precision, the pre-op toric IOL reference markings should be spot on. So pre-op reference markings can be slit lamp marking, bubble marking, the free hand, the smartphone assisted, the digital marking, femtolaser assisted, and an intraoperative aperometry. Uh, so coming to the slit lamp marking, the patient you know, sits straight for, for people who do not uh, uh, have very uh, fancy instruments in their clinic, they can still go ahead with toric IOLs and a fixed point is shown onto the eye and the thin coaxial slit beam is turned 0, 180 degree and on a dry cornea with a 26 gauge needle or pen, we can mark. Bubble marker is similar, we need to mark the three foot plate points and after putting the speculum with the bubble in the center of the two lines, gently press the marks but then this can again be cumbersome and the patient might not be comfortable so freehand marking is one of my favorites uh, so uh, like on a dry cornea the, we put the speculum and the patient sits straight so uh, many people have a query that uh, the, the, the it might not be just 0 180 degree so I usually shine the torch through both the pupils and see whether the, the patient is sitting straight or not uh, and mark only once so there are many online apps to see whether they are uh, at 0 180 degree available on both the platforms, um, uh, both on the Android and the iOS platforms. So there is a video here. Yeah, so this is a xyroscopic assisted marker. So once the app has been opened, uh, uh, if we put the pull the camera or rotate the camera 0, 180 degree, the camera rotation can be shown on the uh, topmost portion. And uh, keeping the mobile rotation at 0 degree, we align the corner reflex at the center, take a photograph, manually adjust the cornea within the circle, manually align the cornea within the circle then, Press the protractor sign at the right bottom, drag one point through the mark and the other point through the center of the circle. So at the when we're drawing the, uh, the red lines through the mark, it has to be at the limbus. Uh, it's it, uh, not beyond the limbus, not on the cornea. So that is where the mark should be. And the mark should be as thin as possible. So the, coming to the this marking, the in marking in the theater, on a dry cornea, we're marking with the Mendes ring and an axis marker. And again, the uh, depress the instrument gently and mark the incision only once. Coming to the image guided systems, uh, the variant measure Measurement unit, uh, no financial interest here, uh, with the near infrared LED lights measures the sphere and the cylinder power of the central 2.8 millimeter of the cornea. And, um, um, uh, 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 it takes into reference multiple reference points on the conjunctiva, the limbus, the scleral vessels, uh, the iris features and creates a digital overlay between the live surgical image and the images taken preoperatively. And then this, uh, this uh, the data is passed on to the vision planner and then to the variant digital marker. So this helps in you know, reducing any uh, surgeon induced or assistant induced transcription errors, which is very important as we've just discussed uh, the few talks back. So. Uh, uh, the, the, over here, the, this image-guided uh, ma virtual marking can be seen. We also get to see the rexis after, you know, rexis marking is available and uh, the cataract is just preceded as like a normal cataract. And uh, for, even for the IL implantation, we get the axis and the IOL is implanted on the axis accordingly. So there has been various studies like digital image gu guidance delivers better outcomes than the slit lamp assisted and the conventional manual ink marking techniques in terms of astigmatism but uh, as far as the smartphone assisted versus the image guidance has been done like in my hands like it, this paper we've done a paper and this was also like this one the best paper of the session uh, at uh, AIOC two years back so uh, the results were almost accurate and uh, at par so coming to femtolaser second marking so this can be corneal marks capsulotomy marks I've not seen anybody doing capsulotomy marks we what we go for is the uh, uh, corneal marks so uh, what the what is done is uh, initially a freehand marking is done and um, uh, that can be confirmed to the reference markings either with a smartphone or a pendulum marker whatever is comfortable in the surgeon's hand and then the LOI is the 0 180 degree marking so the LOI is aligned with the reference marking accordingly and uh, thereafter uh, the docking is done and the femtolaser proceeded the K readings are already fit into the catalyst nomogram and uh, the axis and uh, the if like even if you're going to plan for our quit. 
so uh, over here as we can see yeah so this is uh, after the rexis has been done so uh, i'm uh, applying this mender's ring in the access marker here just to cross check whether the femto marks are accurate or not and if we can appreciate there's a faint glow under the reference markings uh, uh, under the access markings so those faint glows are the femto access corneal marks so they very much coincide and almost all my cases i've seen they are superimposing and uh, it's very much accurate uh, 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 in all the cases I have been seen so far and this corneal femto marks also helps in the post-operative period to see whether the IOL there's no IOL rotation in the post-operative period so coming to the intraoperative waveform tabarometry it's a real-time measurement measures a vague pseudo-vague refraction and helps to choose us the IOL power but again the results can be skewed with surface changes OVD choice IOP maintains speculum pressure and finally it's again guesstimates the ELP so uh, I would like to sum up with let's walk with the present and I the future. Thank you. And I would like to invite you all for the AIOC 2024 Kolkata for the upcoming uh, next year. You give us a room in the venue. You give us a room at the venue. Then we come. Perfect, sir. ITC, Sunar Bangla. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, next speaker is there, Dr. Ravi? We don't have so see uh, when we are talking manual marking, free hand marking. Once you have done the marking, put the patient on slit lamp and measure the axis of that marking. Hmm. Okay, that will because sometimes it is not 90, it is 87, you know, or 180 only 177. Hmm. That is one thing. Second thing is that when you are variant and all these things will work, provided uh, the head position, chin position you know the marker on the vertical bar and the alcanthus there meaning all those points need to should be told because the position of the patient is very very important when you are working for the time to when the patient is lying down on the no very on actually in the, the area. clinic yes. thank you thank you sir. yeah uh, yeah sorry so this uh, sir was also saying that reference marking is very very important so once uh, you're doing the reference marking first is the your 90 degree marking just make sure that 90 degree marking is at a proper level so if you are doing sometimes you are doing all the three markings simultaneously what happens you are it may it may be straight but sometimes it goes down so it is not exactly at the 180 180 degree sometimes it uh, down to 160 150 degrees so lower marking sometimes do which causes a lot of problem doing the final marking on the so first you do the 90 degree marking at a proper level so that it covers the cornea nicely so taking again that into reference do the 180 degree marking so they are exactly on 180 degree as i was saying do make sure again with you that measure that marking is at 180 degree or not so that's very important thank you thank you it was an important topic and uh, marking is one of the sources of errors in the final toric ir outcome it's one of the errors where the where you are going to align the axis of the IOL, whether it's going to remain in place or not there are so many other sources whether the keratometry is appropriate or not the head position when you're measuring the the keratometry whether it's tilted or not there are so many sources of errors this is one of them and although we are of course nitpicking on whether we should do freehand marking or slit lamp based or baryon based or all these things uh, we are really going deep into that one two d degrees off axis etc we want to we should also but ultimately toric i will we have to remember it's a very forgiving surgery with forgiving outcomes as well so overall with all our marking systems whatever we do and wherever we align more or less to the same uh, alignment of the IOL to those marks the results are fairly very decent i would say we don't get too many toric i surprises in such terms so uh, although we are talking about marking, we should go be very, very particular, but at the same time, you have to remember that it's quite forgiving as well. Thank you so much. Thank but you. Lala, indeed, yeah. I talk. Especially with the premium toric IVLs, this will become very important. Thank you, sir. Lovely.